Studios. Today I'm going to be making my first video here on how to use the program Max Stitch. This is a really great tool for designing your own cross stitch patterns. I've been using it for years and I want to try to demonstrate how to use some of the basic tools in here. I know this is a pretty long video so I want to let you know some of the things I'm going to be going over today. Basically I'm going to show you how to make a new file and resize that so that you can make it you know a four inch design pattern as I'm doing in this example here shown. It's a four inch square and I'm going to show you how you can change the stitches per inch on there. I'm going to add stitches. I'm going to be changing colors both from the beginning and changing colors that already exist in the pattern. I'm going to be showing you how to add colors to the palette that you have. I'm going to be going over adding text and then editing and erasing some of the stitches that you have and I'm going to be adding backstitch that you can see here. I'm going to show you how to copy or flip areas in your design. And last but not least, I'm going to show you how to save the design that you make as a PDF file. And this is the exact design that I'm going to be making here today. I'm going to show you how we get from a blank canvas all the way to your very own cross stitch pattern. If you like this pattern, if you just want to stitch it up yourself, it is available on my website, which is littlestabstudios.com. I'm going to have a link in the description to there, and I'm also going to put links into different time marks for how to complete different um, how to complete different parts of this uh, tutorial. So if you just want to see how to do backstitching, I'll put a link in for there in the description. Or if you want to see how do I save this as a PDF file, I will put a link into that as well. And those are going to be marked as timestamps. So it'll be easier for you to find that in such a big video. But anyway, thank you for watching this and let's get to it. That I wanted to throw in here. Um, the program I'm going to be demonstrating is called Max Stitch. It is a software program designed by Ursa Software. It is a very popular so um, cross stitch designing software. It's available on both Mac and on Windows. They have been developing this for over 25 years as you can see on the website. Link right up here. I'm not affiliated with them. I just really like the program. They're really great at helping and communicating with users and I really recommend it as someone who's been making cross stitch patterns for years. Um, I also recommend checking out their website. They do have a free demo version that you can look into and then if you decide that you like it you can see here you can download it for about 30 to 50 dollars and here's the demo version that they have available designing as well. So first thing we're gonna do is open the program I'm going to be going over a lot of things in here, but it's mostly going to be how to create a new design. So first I'm going to select new. I am using the 2019 version. I haven't upgraded it to the newest available version, but I recommend doing that. If you haven't used this program at all, I highly recommend reading the Getting Started Guide. This is a really good overview of using it from learning how to size your design to how to select threads and use all of the basic tools in here. You will get more familiar with this, but if you haven't used the program before, again, the quick start guide is really great. So I'm going to go over to a new design. We're not going to go to default settings. We're going to go to choose your design size. I do this every single time so that I can make sure that I make a design that is the size that I want my stitching to be. Um, it depends on what kind of fabric you intend to use, but generally you can switch this from 14, you can go all the way down to five stitches per inch and all the way up to 50 per inch. I've never seen Ida available in either of those. I suppose if you wanted to do linen, <laughs> you wanted to do one over one, it could work for that. But for this example, I'm going to be using 
pretty standard 14 stitches per inch on the fabric. I've already uh, created the design that I'm going to be using today and I'm going to be doing a four inch design. That's what I'm going to be working with. Um, if you notice, I have this keep ratio selected. If I turn that off, then I can move the height around. But if I keep it selected, it's going to make sure that both the width and the height stay in proportion. So if you want to do a square design, I would keep this selected. But if you want to do a different design size, a rectangle, whatever, then just click it off and you can adjust the height as needed. It's going to show you both inches and centimeters over here. And then if I change the stitches per inch, it will show me how that affects my design size as well. And for the color of the cloth, you can go with a standard white through beige over here. You can also change this in the design itself later on, so don't worry too much about that. And the design that I'm going to be working on is a pretty simple heart. I'm going to be going over how to change colors a little bit, add text, and backstitch. So I'm just going to call this I Love You. I'm not going to do any borders, and I'm not going to add any masks. That would be something a little bit more advanced and something that I would get into at a later time. But this is what we're going to start out with. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then it's going to load up that file for us. And as you can see, it's already got the title up at the top. So now we are ready to get started with our design. As you can see, it already has a palette of 52 DMC colors here. And I know if you've done any stitching, you're like, there's a lot more than 52 colors, and you would be absolutely right. And the first thing I'm going to do actually is customize this palette. So all you have to go over to is this little plus sign. And then if you click it, it's going to say thread family, and it's going to show hundreds of colors over here. It does go default to DMC, but if you click on that, you're going to see that you can choose from anchor colors and you can go with the alternative names, the silks, wools, etc. It has Cosmo threads, crescent colors, which are also known as the classic color works, a bunch of the DMC varieties. Um, yeah, it just goes on and on. It does have a lot of different um, thread families available. I will be sticking to standard DMC for the demonstration. And I already know that the colors that I want to use for the specific project are going to be these coral colors here. I want to make sure I have 350, 351, 52 added. And then actually, I forgot, I wanted to get another one in there that was 349 and just to show you it's another coral and you can search by both number and by the name so if you remember oh it's a coral color you don't remember the number you can search by the name as well so I'm gonna go ahead and click save now and then I have the palette saved over there now that I've got the palette done I'm going to start to make my design. When I start, usually I start in the middle. It's a little bit easier to work from the center over here. And I'm going to be doing a symmetrical design so that I can show a couple of the little tools that I like to use in there as well. So over to this part here, I'm going to go up Let's see, one, two, three, and then I'm going to start on the fourth, and I'm just going to make a simple heart. I'm not doing anything super fancy. I just want to show you how you click in a space. You want to go at the very point with your mouse, and you can add in those stitches of color. By default, you will be using this X. 
as you can see it adds a single stitch. You can also do four stitches at a time. So if I click this, it's going to add in a swatch of four stitches. You can also do circles, which would be <clears throat> like a cross and then half stitches surrounding it, nine stitches, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You can do quarter stitches. I use these quite a bit. And you've also got selection tools from here. Some stranger stitches like horizontal, vertical half stitches, things like that. This one, those are the quarter stitch grid. Okay, those are like the petty point stitches, I think. If you hover over the icons, it's going to show you fred knots, beads, buttons. Here we've got the back stitching, and then we've got a running stitch, and then Another one I want to show is the full line of stitches. This is also a fun one to use. You just drag it from one point, let go, and it adds full lines of stitches onto there. And I'm going to fill in the rest of this using the single stitches. I find it a little bit easier to control that way. Now I've got my other coral selected. And again, I'm not doing anything very difficult in here. It's just to demonstrate how things work. As you can see, it's pretty easy. I just go over to another color selector, and I also like how at the bottom here it's showing me which color I'm working with at the time. So it's easy not to get too mixed up. And then finally, Add the lightest color. So you can see now I've got half a heart here and it goes in variegated colors. For the sake of design, let's say that I wasn't quite happy with this. I wanted to see what it looks like if I added a different color. So let's say I add a stripe of blue. Um, and let's pretend I like it for now. Okay, we're just gonna go over Let's say I think that is the coolest thing ever. So I'm going to leave that blue. And now I'm going over to the selector tool. Sorry, I should have shown that in more detail. This box grabs a selection. This is extremely useful. You can use it for copying, deleting, etc. I'm going to select the area. And then as soon as I let go, let it know I'm happy with that, this option tab pops up. And I'm going to look at all of these and it's got a ton of different um, options for me to choose from. Now I don't want to copy this picture exactly. Instead of what I want to do is flip this area left right. This would also be flip around this axis but left right is a little easier to understand and then as soon as I do this it flips the area and makes a copy for me and then I just click it once I'm happy with where I placed it. And it actually has it still saved on the clipboard, so if I click it again, I can keep making copies of that. I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna hit Command Z and get rid of those two. Now, I've got the heart complete, and as you can tell, it took half the time that it would have if I had done the whole thing by hand, and I can make sure that it's completely even. And then let's say, you know what, after seeing this whole thing, get the X back up so that heart's not in the way, I don't really like the blue stripe. Now I could go in by hand again and change it, but another way I can do that is get this eyedropper tool. At the bottom I can double check, it says 312 navy, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to go up to this palette toolbox. And Instead of this one, what I want to hit is replace active thread with. 
and I want to replace that with which color coral is it? I think that's the medium one. We'll hit replace and see if that, it looks like that's the right one. And a good way to double check is to actually go over and change the view. Right now I have it in the standard color block selection. You can also view it in black and white symbols. Ah, and here you can see it did this little buggy thing and I'll show you how we get rid of that as well. You can change it to color symbols and you can see symbols over color which is one of the ways that I prefer to have my patterns at the end. I can see it as filled stitches. This is kind of a computer generated view of what it would look like as a finished pattern. You can see it if you did half stitches only. If you did it with beads, I believe this one is. Another bead view, like a pixelated view, and then hollow beads and solid beads. We go back to blocks. And then one of the problems I have had in the past is sometimes when I add in the color, it's trying to give me multiple symbols for the same color. And as you can see, I do have this Coral 350 in there twice. And for some reason, it's decided, you know what, you need to have two symbols for this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hit Palette, and I want to move duplicate threads from the palette. It decided to get rid of everybody. Looks all right. It did get rid of the right one though, and as you can see, that fixes the problem right there. If you accidentally do that, let's pretend you didn't want to do that. You just hit Command Z or Undo, and it's gonna switch them right back. And yet, for some reason, it decided it doesn't want to switch back the sign. I guess that's okay. <laughs> Not going to complain there. <laughs> so um, I will be removing all of these at the end anyway, except for the colors that I use. But I do want to add a little bit of text because I feel like it's a little empty looking with just the heart there. So what I want to do, I already decided that I like American Typewriter for the phrase here. I'm just going to write, I love, and then enter you. Because I'm making a cute little heart pattern. Um, you'll see that I had the size set on 13. I find that between 12 and 16 is what's most comfortable for me in terms of working with it on a you know reasonable scale. Over here, you can view it. All of these lines represent 10 stitches, so you can get an idea. This is about one inch tall, I guess. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it's, it's 10 stitches, so it is less than an inch tall. You could always make it slightly bigger, slightly smaller, if you felt like it. <clears throat> Usually it's going to justify itself to the left. I want it centered, personally, for this one. So we're going to go ahead and hit paste. You can paste it as a layer if you want to be able to edit that at a later point. I feel like it's okay though. And then I'm just trying to get this exactly like I had it there. Except, I know what you're thinking, that's in pink and it's a little hard to see. It's fine, we're just going to click black and then click it again. It doesn't go away automatically. If you have this problem, all you need to do is go back over to the X and it's immediately going to change it back to your regular cursor. So now I have the gist of my pattern over here, but um, you might notice that the text I have in my finished pattern is a little bit different than this. And what I did is I thought it was a little difficult to read, so I decided to clean it up. That's what we're going to go and use our eraser tool for the first time here. So for example, I found this little bit, a little bit messy. So I cleared it off 
And same thing over here. Now the E is a little bit easier to read. And then I clicked over here to clean up the U. I was fine with the rest of it because it is supposed to be you know, a little bit you know, messy, sloppy looking. That was kind of my goal with this pattern. I wanted it to look like a coloring book page kind of thing. Let me go ahead and save that real quick. Um, yeah, I'll just save it in documents, it's fine. Just remember also, if you're not very familiar with programs and quick keys, I do recommend getting used to some of them. I hit Command S for my shortcut to save. There's a lot of great shortcuts in here and if you do them with the keys, and you'll notice that they have the marked to undo on a Mac, it's Command Z, on Windows, it's Control Z, etc. It can help you a lot with cutting down time that you spend doing some of the difficult work. So now I have all the colors that I want in my pattern. So I'm going to show you now to remove them if we want to remove them on purpose. I like to do this for all my patterns when I'm done with the colors, I like to remove all of the unused ones. So all you need to do is go over to palette. I want to hit remove all unused threads from the palette. This makes it much clearer where on earth do I have ecru or mocha beige. Come on, well, we got that up here. I'm a little confused why it's doing this. Oh well. For some reason it's decided that it has that color in when it doesn't. <clears throat> I've never had it do this before, so that's fun. Of course, the time that I decide to demonstrate it. Oh well. Let's move on to working with backstitching. As you might have seen, I went over here and I clicked on the add backstitch button. And what I'm gonna do is draw a rough outline around the heart. Something to keep in mind is that you want, I know that the icon looks so messy and you almost think, oh, am I supposed to start at the bottom where this black line is? But no, you wanna start at the very point of your mouse. And that is how you are going to be able to use the back stitching more precisely. And I keep looking down at my phone because I have a picture of the finished pattern on there. I want to try to match it as close as possible. <laughs> so I just thought adding a little bit of back stitching, you know, I can show you how that's done. Again, I wasn't happy with that line. All I have to do is hit Command Z and try again. And I'm just going to outline one half of the heart. And then by copying it again, I'm saving myself time. And I'm also making sure that it is completely the same on both sides. I don't think it would copy. Yeah, I think I need to have it this way. Okay, flip this area left to right. And then if I click it again, now we got that totally copied. It looks nice and cute. Again, I need to go back up here. Oh, let's pretend real quick that I wanted to get rid of this for some reason. I select it and I can delete it without touching the text by using the selection tool. Another thing that you can do, you do have to recapture it, select this hit option, erase 
back stitch from this area. This is only going to remove any back stitching. It's going to leave all of your full stitches, your half stitches as they are. That's a very useful tool to have as well. Another fun thing I like to do, especially if I'm working with light colored flosses, is to change the color of the Ida. This is also useful if you want to see how your design looks on, for example, very bright blue. Or let's say that you want to work on black. You can do that and you can see you can't see your font at all. You can change your cloth color to anything. Right? You're literally picking whatever you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and go with kind of an oatmeal shade. Save it again. And then what we want to do, finally, I've gone over backstitching, changing colors, text. I want to show you how you can export this into a PDF file. So I'm going to go up to this import export tab. I'm going to go over to export. I'm not going to go over how to make a, um, how do you say, how to make a cover sheet or a footer sheet at this time just for importing, sorry, exporting this into a PDF file that you could share. You could sell your designs if you'd like to or just be able to print it out easily. So first thing you can do if you are not in a standard size place, if you're in the US for example, you would use a letter. I always go with A4. I haven't had anyone complain if they've had to print it in letter format. Usually it's okay. And I like to hit the entire chart if my design is going to be about paper size or smaller. And I tend to work in smaller designs. This is going to make it so that the printout is going to be nice and big and easy to read. Then for style, you can select as many as you want. You can do the black and white blocks. You can do the symbols. Sorry, excuse me, blocks is going to be the color. Symbols is the black and white. I like to do symbols on color and symbols. Generally, that's how I like to do things with this. You could also do color symbols if you want, but I find those two alone are usually enough for most people. But if you'd like to go over more options, of course, that's fine. I'm also happy if anybody you know, says, hey, I have a problem reading this. Um, you know, go back over. Also, real quick, I forgot to mention this part, but when you're doing your charts, something I like to recommend is to definitely give it a look and make sure that you don't have any confusing symbols nearby. I know it's a little bit weird to be adding this in, but like for example, these two colors, um, they're quite similar in real life. You know, these are right next to each other on the color family. So if I have DMC352 with this diamond, and then I've got, sorry, 351 with this kind of spade looking thing, it's a little bit difficult to see the difference between those. So what I want to do actually is go over to palette. I'm going to hit edit current thread. Oh, okay. Well, it's fine. And then go over to symbol and I can change it to any of these. And so all I want to do is make sure that it's a symbol that's different. So why don't we click on this little triangle dude? He's pretty cool. And I'm also going to change the symbols on color. Done. Bam. Look how much easier that is to see the difference between. So I definitely recommend doing that if you are using a bunch of similar shaded colors, especially, or if you're planning on making a black and white version of your pattern much easier to read if you do it that way. So sorry to take that little detour. Again, going back to import export A4, the entire chart style. I'm going to do symbols, which is black and white, and symbols on color. We now have the symbols all nice and easy to read. We're going to do page number. I like to have it easy there. The title, just going to be I love you here. Row column title marks, and then copyright. You can do your name. I'm going to do Little Stab Studios. 
which is where I publish my patterns under. You can change your back stitching guide from a regular line to a couple of these different ones. I'm okay with how things are. The grid is just how people are going to see the printed grid lines on there. I've always found that this standard grid dashed is pretty easy to look out. Sorry, preview page. Um, we are going to do framed view. If you click on framed view, it's going to pop up with an example of what your pattern looks like. You can change the frame. You can make it a wooden frame. You can make it a really busy heart and flower frame. <laughs> they have a bunch of different frames. If you click a round one, it's not going to work for every pattern unless you've designed a round pattern. I have, you know, a standard, there's a bamboo hoop here. But the problem is you do have to keep in mind how your chart looks. You can actually get this in there. If you just play around with the size, this is affecting the size of the frame. And this is not the best frame to show that. If I go with the standard wood one, if I go to small, it makes the frame smaller. I go to large, it makes it bigger. I kind of like the big frame look. I think it changes that to be kind of cute. You also have an outer mount and an inner mount, and you can change the color. Both of those will go with contrasting colors, so it's easy to see what is what. This is like if you get a professionally framed one, you're going to have different mounts in there. And you can have them in multiple colors. You can get rid of both of those if you like. And then you have a nice simple look. So I like this. I think it's nice monochromatic simple. Which is the look I'm going for for this. I'm going to hit use. So now we have frame view as the preview. You can add a page map. This is very useful if you have a very large pattern for something this small. And remember this is you know, less than 4 inches. So we don't need a page map for that. That's for your gigantic patterns. Cover page. I usually do use a cover page in my designs. You have to make this in a different um, in a different program. I actually make mine in Pages, which is the free Word document file. Um, sorry, program that comes with Mac, and then I save it as a PDF file. You can make a cover page in, was it Canva? Canva? I can't remember the name of the online editing software right now. You can make them in a lot of different things. And then you just need to save your cover, your footer page with your information. With um, I like to put in the size of the pattern, what type of fabric I recommend, that sort of thing. The thread sorter, you can change that if you'd like to. And that'll go on your cover, your footer page as well. With the key, you can choose to have one, yes or no. You can choose to include the name of the thread, the number, how many strands you want to use. The standard, I did not mess with this at all. The standard is two strands, just like it is within most cross stitching. I like to make sure that I keep this subtitle in, which shows how large the file is going to be. If you stitch it on 14 stitches per inch, I think it's helpful for people who want to figure out how big a piece of Ida or linen to cut for their design. And then others over here, you can add your name. You can add any name that you'd like to. You can add any notes, like, you know, feel free to change the colors, or you could try this in variegated, etc., etc. I'll add notes about color substitution sometimes. If I'm not working with DMC floss, for example, I will add DMC substitutions that I recommend, things like that. Then we go on to thumbnail view. It doesn't show you the cover page. It always starts out with the first page of the file. So it's starting out with the black and white preview for us. And even, oh, even hitting the keys, it doesn't change that. It just shows the first page. But I like to click on thumbnail view anyway just to make sure I do have it as the full page. And you can see this is larger than the finished project. So we don't need to have multiple pages for this pattern. It's 
that small. <laughs> Finally, for color choices, you can go with your normal. You can go with some alternatives if you set that up. That's something I would consider a bit more advanced. So I'm not going over how to set up alternate colors for this one, but that is something that you can do. And if you'd like to see a video on that or any other skills with using Max Stitch, I would appreciate if you left a note in the comments or let me know on my website and I will try to get to some more demonstration videos when I have the time to do that. When you are finished, you can click the OK button. It's going to wait a moment, ask you how you'd like to save this. Again, we will go with I love you. You don't need to worry about the file extension. It's automatically going to save it as a PDF. And then mine likes to load up the PDF as soon as it's done. So once I save it, you can see it put that framed view right on front. And then it has our copyright term at the bottom. Here is our chart, nice and big, easy to read, bigger than the actual finished project. And then it has the color key below each one. If you like, you can leave those in. But here is a fun little tip, actually. Um, let's see, where did I save that? I saved that under, I'll just go to recent. And here I've got the file right here. I'm going to hit control, open with, instead of opening it with Adobe, I'm going to open it with preview. Preview is, again, a standard um, PDF viewer that comes with Mac. And if I click on this page in the you know page finder and then I hit the delete key, it got rid of that. And you might be like, ah, that's just for the view, right? You'll notice it now says one of four edited up at the top here. All I have to do is hit save. And then I close it out. If I click it again, the next time I open it up, those changes are still there. So that's how you can get rid of the extra floss keys. So that is all you need to do to make your own pattern. You can download this pattern for free on my website. That's at www.littlestabstudios.com and you can have fun working with that. I also have other free patterns there. If there's anything that you would like me to cover with using Max Stitch, please let me know. I will be working on a video for how to um, get a photo to convert into a stitchable file with a reasonable number of <laughs> floss colors, things like that. That's something that a lot of people want to know how to do so that they can stitch you know, pets or people, things like that. So I'll be working on that. But for now, here is how you make a simple uh, cross stitch pattern. I hope this helped and please hit the like button or check out my website if you found this useful. Thanks so much guys!